watching No to Nine. Hello, and welcome to No to Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 98, using Apache POI to export from X pages. Free your data. Okay, uh, just a quick, couple quick things about Drive to 99. This is the second to last show, I guess you could call. So, in my mind, uh, we made it. Uh, and I couldn't have done without the contributors, and I'll talk more about that uh, in, a, in a future show. Um, but tomorrow's show will be the 99th one so please come see that uh i have a very special guest with a very special topic on and i'm pretty excited uh, f for that show to, to get out okay th here's the slides i've been using for the additional resources notes to nine index on notes nine.com which is you know the x pages tv site and yes x pages tv slash index it sucks i know it sucks you know it sucks we all know it sucks i'm working on it i've been doing this 99 thing i've got this you know speaking thing at lowest we going so i haven't been able to fix that uh there is a problem with it i think with i think it's an ie problem where you click on every episode and, and it's always plays the, the same one it's some kind of session scope arrest thing i think with ie uh, i don't believe it affects firefox and chrome so if you're having a problem finding different episodes just um Try a different browser for now so I can fix it. And no, you can't download directly from X Pages TV. There is a direct download link on each blog entry. Um, there's also an RSS feed to plug this show into iTunes, which is it's actually on the iTunes store, which is kind of neat, or, or their, their pod, their music thing, um, etc. So you can download the shows that way um, if, if you need that as well. Uh, in the community, we've got these sites, xpages.info, OpenNTF, Collaboration Today, uh, etc. Okay, today's show, uh, Paul Calhoun is returning uh, with yet another great show for, for the Drive to 99. And I can't thank him enough for all his efforts, uh, but I'll probably try next show. Um, but Paul is uh, from Net, Net Note Solutions, and he's a, a world-class speaker, and I had his speaking partner, Russ, on yesterday's show see i try to you know end with, with those two guys and uh they do the boot camps and and paul does the tlcc courses um and and paul is a specialist in, in training and mentoring uh so if you have any needs for for training or, or mentoring you can you know engage him one-on-one -on -one if need be i'm sure he'd be happy to do that and you, you probably can't learn from a from a better instructor um, as you'll see in this video. Uh, so in this video, Paul is going to introduce us to Apache Poi and show us how to use it to export data to like Excel and Word and stuff like that. And even though the cheat sheet does have an example in exporting to Excel, and we've done uh, another example or two on Notes and 9 or so, that example is kind of using an HTML table um, to Excel, which some versions of Excel does give an error because it's like, well, you're sending me HTML, but you're calling it XLS. So what's up? So what 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 Paul's going to show us to do is how to do the same similar thing with with Apache Poi, but Apache Poi creates actual Excel files, so you can make workbooks, you can do everything you want. It's it's actually the the, the Microsoft file format. So this is the way to do it uh, if you want to export to Excel. This is the tool to use. With that being said, let's go to the demo. Hi, this is Paul Calhoun with NetNet Solutions Unlimited. I'm back again to record uh, the Notes and 9 Drive to 99 video. Uh, in this session, we're going to talk about using Apache Poi to stream output to spreadsheets. One of the great advantages of XPages and um, some of the things that we've, we've talked about is the ability to use XPages as actually X agents to uh, allow users to create you know, content and output. Uh, specifically using POI to create Excel spreadsheets and uh, PDF documents. So one of the, the differences that, you know, that makes this a little bit different than other solutions is uh, most of the solutions that I saw out there were actually you know, writing the file to the hard drive and then adding the file back to a document. And where that's a, a beneficial use case, a lot of times they just want to be able to save the file to their local hard drive um, and then open it. So this is what we're going to talk about, um, the solution we're going to talk about here in this session. So I've got a sample database that I have, you know, just some sample data out here with, you know, companies and names. The, the main view sample is where we're going to spend most of our time. And, and I'm just going to walk you through the architecture of this. So in order to get this set up, I did go out to the Apache Poi website and I downloaded the, the applicable jar files. So um, I have a development directory. I unzip the file. There's the POI 3.08. Um, and then I got this POI 3.08 jar file. 
Now that jar file can be placed a couple of places. Um, a lot of times uh, to make the, the NSF or the application more, you know, just transportable if you will, then you can actually take that and if you switch over to the package explorer, you can drop that file right down inside in the web content, web INF. This lib folder doesn't exist by default, but you can drop that in there. Uh, you can create that folder and then you can drop the uh, file there. And there you see my Apache POI file. Now I've also added some other ones because I'm using some uh, additional libraries in the sample database. Uh, but that's the only one you need for the Excel spreadsheet export to work properly. So once I've got that jar file in there, uh, then what I can do is go in and I have a, a, a view and a button. And when they click on the button, um, we have several different use cases that I found that most you know, people are wanting. They want to export an entire view um, to Excel, uh, or they want to export selected documents, or they want to be able to provide you know, ad hoc style queries, if you will. Um, and, and we're going to run through each of those particular use cases. Um, again, kind of pictures being worth a thousand words. If we just go ahead and run this one, you'll see that if I open this up then and I click the you know, export view to Excel, then that's going to execute. And that's what that's actually doing. We'll walk through the code and you'll see that that's actually calling an X agent, uh, which is an X page that only has code associated to it. And then it's prompting me to open that with you know Microsoft Excel. So you know it didn't write anything to the hard drive; it all stayed in memory. And you'll see that we've got the entire spreadsheet that's been written out, okay? Of uh, you know exporting the entire view. Now I've got about 200 records in this particular view, so it you know exported the entire thing. So that that's use case number one is just you know show a view, take everything, um, and export it out. The way that we implemented that was in this particular button, the export view to Excel, there's, there's not a lot of code on that particular button at all, is we simply get the name of the view. I'm getting this field list because even though we have the view, rather than uh, going in and determining, you know, we're going to you know, only export the data from the view, uh, we actually want to be able to provide the list of fields from those view documents that we're going to export out. In this case, we're going to get you know, company, first name, last name, and email address. And then we simply redirect to this page called streamexcel.xsp. Now, in that particular case, that stream Excel is an X page. Uh, and in this case, it's architected as an X agent. And what that means is we've gone into the properties of the X page and we set its rendered property equal to false. Um, that means we have to write all of our code in the events. And what's a little bit different about this than you know, some of the other examples you might have seen uh, where we used X agents. And a lot of times the X agents you'll see in the instructions that you have to put all of your code in the after render response. Uh, but because we're actually hijacking the output stream, we need to actually put all of our code in the before render response. So that's just a little bit of a gotcha um, and a little bit different there. Um, we then go in and we start just building our output. So um, we import the Java Lang because we're going to use some of the capabilities of there. Um, the org Apache POI HSSF user model, uh, that's the package that contains the classes of the horrible spreadsheet format that we, we want to use. We then pick up the view name uh, from the session scope variable. We get that view. We get our field list and then we just start creating some variables. Uh, we create a sheet name and a workbook name. We create placeholders for the notes document um, and the next process document. We create the actual workbook and then we actually create the sheet name itself. Okay. We create a helper class that's just going to allow us to work with dates a little bit easier. We create a header style for our headers. We then go in, we set the font for those. We create the column header rows. So we process each of the uh, fields in the array and we output those to our headers. Um, we then go and process where you know the notes collection is equal to that particular view that we pointed to and then we just process each one of the fields in the field list and we output it to a column. Um, so it's going to go down through and get the entry count, sheet, create a row, and it's going to create a row for every document and then in that row it's going to create a cell uh, for each of 
the fields that we passed in. And then it's going to have to determine the, the data type. So when we say item val get type, uh, we need to determine whether it's a date or a number or a string. And if it's a date or a number, we need to handle it differently um, than if it's a string. So that's what the if statements take care of on our behalf there. Uh, we then go through, get next document doc, we do our recycle, we clean everything up. We ought to set the width of the column. We set the file name um, equal to workbook um, name that that was passed in, so that can be variableized.xsl. Uh, we set our faces context to get the external contents. We get the response, um, and then we get the output stream. Um, and again, this is what allows us to do all of this processing in memory. Uh, we set our content type to Excel. This is something you might have to play with just a little bit, the application um, XMS Excel. This pretty much works with um, the last three versions of Excel and Office, but again, that might be something you have to play with just a little bit. Uh, we know cache it. We set our content disposition to the, we, that's where we set our file name, so the file name's automatically set. Uh, we write the page output, which actually creates the spreadsheet. Uh, then we flush and close the output stream. And again, the result of that is allowing us to go in um, and run this particular um, application. So I'm going to execute that one more time so you can see it. When we execute this, then we don't have to actually save anything to the local hard drive. When I export my view to Excel, I get prompted for um, you know open with. It already has the file name, you know, WB view data, which was set you know, via the variable, and boom, we have our header, which are all the nice fields, all the columns are set the way we want, um, and then that works the way we want. The other use case that we have um, that, that I get asked for the most often is uh, being able to do this with a set of selected documents. So um, in this particular case, we have an X page with a view control that has the selection control on it. And in this case, we're going to do the same thing. We have you know, main view selected docs. If we open that up, the only difference is now we have the selected capability. We're going to call, use the same basically structure. We're going to, in this time, we're going to call stream Excel selected docs, which is um, an X agent. And that particular X agent is just going to change the way that um, we get the document structure. So all of this code is pretty much the same. We get our view data, we create the workbook, we create the sheet, all the helper classes, all that's the same. Create the column header rows the, the, from the values that we pass in. Um, and then we get the you know, notes collection, which in this case is all of the selected docs. And the selected docs um, is actually just a series of note IDs. And so we say for that note collection length, we get document by ID, and then we go in and we process that entire note collection just like we processed the view in the previous one. Um, so again, the code is very, very similar, but what that allows users to do is have an interface where they can go in, um, and if we execute this, you'll see that we can, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you can go in and you can now select you know, whatever documents you want, you know, using the checkbox interface that um, is built into the view control. If you had another way to select documents, you know, however you process that. Export the selected documents to Excel. Open with, again, streaming down, nothing saved to the hard drive on the server locally, and then boom, Shazam like magic. You can say, you know, they saved it there, now they're opening it. Um, you know, so it's all handled in memory. You don't have to worry about, you know, um, having any files saved on your backend server. Uh, and, and that's what, you know, a lot of the, the users are looking for there. Uh, and you don't have to worry about writing files to the server. The last use case we have is going in and actually letting them to do, you know, ad, let the users do ad hoc style uh, kind of reporting. Um, so, you know, being able to create uh, reports, if you will, uh, by going in and passing in full full query uh, searches. So uh, I just created an X page that's a form here, and what we're doing here is 
um, actually you know doing some setup where we actually go in and we create some configurations um, so I, I wanted to make this as turnkey as possible uh, so I actually created a a form profile which is just a standard notes form that would allow users to go in or you know power users administrators to go in and define the application name the form name um, a field list and then optional you know column labels that they might want to um, have there and what you do with that is then you know you create a new document um, from these form profiles and if we open that in the notes client then it would look something similar to this so I could go into my you know sample data with labels or no labels um, you know sample data form here's my field list optional list of um, you know friendly labels there that we can pass in and once that's been created then users can then you know run the X page reports and then choose the the particular you know configuration that they want so if we were to you know open this up and execute that that would look something similar if not exactly like the following so when they choose a form then they're going to see the ones that are specific to their application um, so I can say I want uh, the sample data form there um, which is actually then going to read in those um, column labels so then they can choose uh, the ones that they want they don't have to choose everything they can just choose okay you know, these are the available fields but you know these are the only ones that I want and you can type in a file name which is you know my Excel export and a sheet name my sheet uh, optional query this is a full text uh, search query so uh, for example we only want the things that are in Texas um, we can have a default field value or a column width if we want we go to create that report and similar to the previous examples what we're going to do then is be prompted for um, the download name and then you know it picks up that it's completely variableized and now what we have is a customized report that only includes the you know records that you know match the full text query so that allows the users to go in and um, you know basically create the Excel spreadsheet that they want um, and again this is kind of a complete turnkey solution uh, that that allows you to use X pages and uh, the configuration and notes to stream this output so that you don't have to worry about saving anything on the server it's all done um, down at the the client level so they can save those and then do what they want to with them so that was a, a quick overview um, you know detailing the three different use cases that I find that I use the most often when uh, I'm using um, Excel exporting uh, so hope y'all uh, find this useful and we'll talk to you on the next one thanks a lot bye and that's the demo I, I thank Paul uh, very much for this show uh, if you have any questions for me here's my contact information and I thank you for your time